Hi, I'm Emmy. Welcome to my homestead. There have been a lot of questions lately on Facebook regarding my 100% whole wheat sandwich bread. So I thought today would be a great day to show you how it's done. It's pretty easy and it rises well. And remember, it's 100% whole wheat. Now, I'm going to make a smaller batch than I usually do because I usually make fairly large batches for my fairly large family. So, are you ready? Let's go make some bread. Today I'm just doing one loaf because it'll be easier and um, we can do it all by hand. If you have any questions, I will have the recipe and all the instructions up on my website. The link should be somewhere right about here. So check that out. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact me through Facebook, through YouTube, or probably the best, through the website itself. Just leave me a message and I will answer your questions. So. <laughs> Let's get started. What we're doing here, we're starting with three and a half cups of flour, and I'm going to add all the dry ingredients to it. So here I'll be adding my yeast, my salt. Right now I'm using some sea salt. Actually, this is pink Himalayan salt. It's really good for you. It helps detoxify and stuff. My wheat is 100% whole wheat and it's freshly ground from wheat berries. I think I'm going to do a video on wheat berries later and grinding wheat. So I have the dry ingredients in here. Just going to mix them up a little bit. I'll be adding my wet ingredients. The wet ingredients include oil. I use a local sunflower oil just organic and I use honey but you can also use either maple syrup or molasses whichever you prefer so I'll put these wet ingredients in next I'll be adding a cup of warm milk so I have a cup of warm milk unfortunately some young people in my house um, broke my glass measuring cups so I only have one left. So I have to be pretty judicial about choosing what I use. I'm gonna just mix this all up. Now I'm sure many of you know that depending on the time of year, you may notice that you sometimes have to add more or less um, liquid to your dough. That's because in the summer, there's more humidity in the air, and the flour holds that humidity, so it doesn't need as much liquid to become dough. However, in the winter months, it's much drier, and so you may need to add more liquid to your dough to get the right tech, uh, consistency and the texture. I'm gonna just stir this all in, and as you can see, I really, really need some more liquid. I'm just gonna stir this in some more first. So I changed my angle. I'll, I'll ju I'm just kneading this by hand. Some of you may wanna choose to use a mixer of some type. Make sure you have your dough hook on. Dough hook should look something like this and it should be on a low setting. So I would turn it on to my lowest setting. And if you're doing it by mixer, mix it for about five minutes or so so you have a nice pliable dough. If you're doing it by hand, it'll take a little longer, closer to seven or eight minutes, maybe even a little longer. But you just keep kneading it. I need, if you can notice, I need with the heel of my hand 
and it'll give you a nice dough. As you can see, can you hear it? It's tacky. It's not coming off on my hand. It's not coming off on my hand as I um, pull my hand off. And it sounds good. It's not too wet, it's not too dry. But, but, it's whole wheat. It's 100% whole wheat. That changes things a little bit. Do you know why? Because wheat absorbs liquid differently. So it takes wheat a little longer to absorb all the liquid. So what may happen is this dough may become too dry and I'll have to add a little more liquid. It could, well, this isn't gonna happen in this case, but sometimes if your dough is too wet, you may have to add just a little more flour. After a little practice at this, you'll get good and you'll know exactly what your dough is supposed to feel like and look like. So keep kneading your dough. I'm gonna continue to knead it and I'll be back in a little bit. So here we have it. You can see this, this dough. Whoop, there we go. It's a uh, much smoother dough. And nothing comes off my hand when I, when I touch it. It's, it's perfect. So now what we're gonna do is I just put a little oil in the bit bottom of this bowl. I'm gonna just turn this around a little bit. I'm gonna put this in here and cover it with a clean cloth. And then I'm gonna put it in a, an area to rise. It's gonna rise for about two hours. It's gonna be in a warm area. And after it rises, we'll punch it down and let it rise some more. We'll be back in about two hours. So now, am I recording? Yes. Okay, so we've given the uh, dough a chance to rise and it's, it's doubled in size. So you can see, nice, much bigger dough. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do now is take this kind of flattening it a little bit and I'm gonna shape it into a log shape similar to this so what I do is I just roll it over I'm gonna pinch the ends a little bit so it's rolled over the ends are pinched and then we have we have this dough and all I'm gonna do I have a uh, I have a bread pan it's lightly oiled and all I'm going to do is just put it in the pan and then let the pan um, let the dough rise again in a warm place until it's about doubled in size or until see it's about flat right now so I want it to come up so it's about an inch inch and a half to two inches above above the bread pan so let's wait another hour so, so as you can see it's doubled in size so now what we'll do is we'll place this in a 350 degree oven 